Hello, free people everywhere. We're going to try to do something today and fail, and you're going to watch it happen. So, I had a request to do a server with ATAC. So, first step, well, on Pi, Raspberry Pi. So, first step is get a Pi. Uh, personally, I would get a 4, not a 5. Get a 5 if you want, but there are some OSs out there that still haven't figured out how to work on 5. So, 4 is a little cheaper. Go with 4, unless you just really want the latest, greatest stuff. Not a problem. Um, you will get better performance. I would not do it on a Pi 3. I tried to use a Pi 3 for this and got just fed up with it. Turned it off, pulled out a Pi 4, and that's where I got to. Uh, I will edit in so that the build of the Pi is in here. You can skip fast past that if you already know how to build your Pi operating system and install it and to an SD card and boot up and all that stuff. Um, I did skip the part where you select your keyboard and all of that, um, but you can you can do that if you want to. Um, there's plenty of videos out there on how to do that. So once you get your Pi built, here we are on the desktop. I'm still at the at the screen that I booted up the Raspberry Pi. Um, later on in the video, I'll tell you how you can turn on a VNC server and use the VNC client if you've never heard of that. That can help out where you don't have to be at the monitor of your Raspberry Pi anymore. You can use your Windows or Mac or Linux computer that you normally use, your laptop, your desktop, to connect and see the screen as if you're sitting in front of it. So here we're using the su command super user to um, actually sudo, so do this as the super user, and it's installed. That's all it took, those commands right there. And it's a little different than what I found on the GitHub install page, so this might help someone if you want to try that. It also helps sometimes if you try other software and it doesn't work, you can use this as a way to do it. So now it's, um, it's installed, but you have to get it running. Um, that's how to get the help command for the tacky application that you just created. And then just to start it up, you just type tacky and hit enter. Uh, You'll need to figure out what your IP address is because by default it just connects to your uh, all 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 is all IP. So any IP you have on your computer, you, it'll be listening on 8087, which it shows right here. And that's what the server's listening on. Now, I never could get a connection to come up from my ATAC client on this uh, and it's running an API it's not running a web server on this port so you can't point a web browser to it and get it to work so ultimately this is kind of a good place to to step off um, there I typed if config if con fig just to get my IP address um, anyway let's let's skip back over to the other part of the video the setup Go download VNC client. You can turn on VNC server on your Raspberry Pi by going to preferences, going to Raspberry Pi configuration, interfaces, and then you just click that, turn it on, use the VNC client, and now you don't have to be on your Raspberry Pi display anymore. You don't even have to have it hooked up to a monitor I would suggest setting a uh, IP address and not just letting it use DHCP that way you always know what IP to get to to get to it um, let's pull up well I'll just disconnect or maybe I can pull up the window no all right let's close this connection I'll bring it back up just so you can see how we did that. VNC viewer. Put in the IP, hit enter, 
Um, I saved the username and password when I built this. When you build your Raspberry Pi, you can set up your username and password, put it in there, and it'll just connect. And then you get the screen. Pretty cool. All right, so uh, here's my IP of my Tacky server. Network, servers, hit the plus. And then it says to connect with credentials or upload server package or scan QR. So that's where I'm at and I can't connect with it. Put in the IP. Okay, I pretty much get this from the same. That's the same as what's on GitHub. Let's go into doc. Hey y'all, Curtis from the future here. I'm not going to make you listen to any more of my ramblings. Basically, it turns out that there's a memory leak on this tacky server and it's not something that I would suggest running. So regardless of what happens after this uh, in my video, it doesn't really matter. So uh, to keep you from having to listen to me drone on and on and on about things that really don't matter, um, I'm just going to say hold out for my next video and uh, hopefully you learned something about running through the rabbit holes um, of, of trying to install software off GitHub. Sometimes it works, sometimes it kind of works, sometimes you find out that it's not really worth running. And I believe in this case, that's where we ended up, at least for me. Um, if you're a developer and you want to help them fix their memory leak, go for it. I think most of the people watching this are not going to be those uh, developer types and they're just wanting to get an ATAC server up and running. So we'll, we'll call this one closed for now and thanks for bearing with me. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it. Most of my stuff is on the drone um, playlist, but I'm going to start updating some more stuff here because since I'm playing with drones, my goal is to get an ATAC server up and running that can display live drone footage. Um, I really don't fly DJI drones that much. I do have one, and I believe that's what the plugin out there is for. So that'll probably be what I start with, but I've got analog and digital, HD0, DJI O3 Air Unit, DJI Vista, all the different kinds of... Uh, Everything except the Caddx uh, walk snail. I just can't, I can't, I don't know, walk snail? Why would you want, I mean, you can tell a, a Chinese company probably put together or went out to a random English word generator and created that, I guess. I don't know. Uh, anyway, don't have walk snail, but I've got the others. And uh, eventually I'd like to get it to where I can see and share drone footage along with everything else. One of the questions that uh, came up on the MeshTastic USA group today was, can you send drone footage over MeshTastic? The answer to that is no. MeshTastic is just for text and t maybe telemetry data like GPS or uh, other types of sensor data like temperature or wind speed, uh, things that are text-based. It's not really made for uh, or have the, it doesn't have the bandwidth for high-speed data transfers. Anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out with me, and uh, hopefully everything uh, you you are looking for, you can find. If you find some information that would be good to include for people running through this video, put it in the comments. Let me know what you're trying to do. Um, look for us on Facebook. There's the Mishtastic USA group, and we've got a chat in there. Uh, then there's, of course, other, other discords and other... Uh, things you can you can join out there but that's the one that um, people are using here in the USA that that don't I mean everyone has their preference right do you want to go on discord do you want to go on a web page do you want to go on uh, an email list there's there's something out there for everyone and uh, anyway uh, thanks bye